All right, now we've dialed in our settings for each of our tool heads and each of the materials we're using with them. And we've done a multi-material print to check our offsets and dial in the uh, tool change performance. So the, the prime and clean and retraction and makeup settings uh, for our tool changes. And we've checked that the materials bond at least well enough with each other to be printable. So now we can move on to our, our final print. So I'll pull up the model here in SolidWorks. Uh, let's see, the flange. Okay, let's just talk quickly about um, how this, this model is built in SolidWorks. So let me roll back my feature tree here. And uh, I'm just starting with an extrusion um, of half of my part, since it's symmetric. And then I'm adding this little uh, rib in the center here just to provide a little bit more stiffness. And that rib alone makes this uh, a slightly difficult uh, part to print because it's not just two-dimensional and there's this overhang here that's unsupported. Um, so that's why we're, we're going to use support material. So I just added some fillets there, uh, mirrored the part, and then extruded my, my part here. This is my stiffening feature in the back. And when I did this extrusion, um, I just deselected this merge result. So that just creates a new body. In Fusion 360, you would um, just select new body and, instead of um, doing this, this portion. It acts a little bit differently, but the steps would all be the same in, um, in Fusion, basically the same. Um, and then same thing, another extrusion for that top portion um, of rigid material. But then um, when, if I, if I was to, to go to print this part um, at this point, um, I have these overlapping regions, which uh, SolidWorks is showing um, with this, this hollow discoloration here. The machine would try to print those regions um, with both materials. Uh, so I need to make sure that the part is well designed uh, for printing by not having inter any interfering sections of material and, and making sure that where one material ends, the next one begins. And um, I don't have any gaps or, or voids there. Uh, that will, will cause delamination of the material. So to do that in SolidWorks, I copied this, this body and then did a combine feature, which is a little counterintuitive, but um, in the combine feature in SolidWorks, you can choose um, to add, to subtract, or to, um, to find the intersecting regions of, of the two bodies. So I subtracted the one body from the other, and then that consumes one of the bodies of that feature. Um, so that, that's why I did the copy first. And then uh, continuing on, I <clears throat> did this extrusion for, or this, this boss extrude feature for um, support, and just extruded it up to um, just above the, the region where I know I need that support, so to, to make sure that I capture that fillet and, um, and all the features that, that require uh, support. So those features, and then here, these, um, these regions that would be where the underhead of the screw contacts. So then again, <clears throat> to not have uh, that extruded body overlap with the, um, the rest of my part, I, I copied uh, the part and then subtracted that from that extruded body that I just created. And um, so now we can see that all those materials are coincident with each other and there's no overlap. And then here, if I hide this, this part, um, I can see that the, these uh, little regions here that support the fillets on, on the part, um, they go to a, uh, a feature size of zero right at the top. They go to just a perfectly sharp corner. Um, and that, of course, won't print. You know, we'll only print up to um, a layer or two below that. So um, to get rid of that, I just did an offset here and then extruded um, that geometry to increase the width of that, uh, of that feature. So now I have um, enough material there so that our slicer will actually print that region. 
And here's our default configuration with all the bodies, all three of them. So we have our PVA support, which is that yellow body there. Uh, the gray is our TPU, and the red is our PETG. So I've already created my different configurations that um, have these different bodies in them. And since this is a, a small print, I'm going to go ahead and, and just uh, go forward with the full print. One thing that we could do, if there was a section of the model that had some complicated features, um, we may want to do a test print of just that area. So say this region here where I have um, PVA support going up to my interface with my PETG. So everywhere else in this model, um, the PETG is going to be printed on the urethane. But in this case, um, the PETG will print on the PVA. And I know I don't have very good adhesion between PETG and PVA. So I may want to just print that portion of the model. Um, so I could just take a section of the model. So let me show that body again. And just create a sketch here. And say I just create a circular cut. Let's go extruded cut through the model. And I'm going to flip the side to cut. So then I'm just going to be left with that region. So then I could run a print um, of just this region of the part, uh, the, the region that I'm worried about printing well, and uh, make sure that I get the performance that I want before I go on to, to the final print. So in this case, you know, it's only a few hour print, and it's, um, it's not a, a lot of material. And I'm fairly confident that it will print well, so I'm not going to do that. But for a much larger print, say one that was going to take uh, 10 or 15 hours and uh, use a lot more material, I, I would do a test print of a region of the, the part like this. So let's just get rid of this. And this. OK. So again, I have a coordinate system defined on the bottom surface. And I'll use that coordinate system when I export, export my models. So let's go to my PETG part and say, save as STL. And I already have the, the parts in here, but I'll just overwrite them. So this is my rigid portion. And then my support. This is my PVA. Oh, and I didn't show, but you should check that you have that um, coordinate system every time that you export. And this one's my PVA, so that's my support material. And then my actual part. OK, so then let's go into Simplify and hide that disk that we printed. Import these three. And then select them all again. Edit Align Selected Model Origins. And then I'll select the bodies for my print. So T5 is PETG. So let's go to Select Models, select None, then come down and grab my rigid portion, PVA. Uh, so that's my support material. Select Models, select None, and Support, and then Cheetah is my actual part or the, at least the flexible portion of my part. OK, so then I'll select all my processes, prepare to print. And that looks good. So just double check that I have the right tools selected for the different regions. And now save toolpaths to disk, quiver flange. And then I'll run my post processor. 
still have my temperatures defined. I still have my auto clean functions on. And then grab my file. And um, I'll still slow down that first layer since we did that in our test print. You know, one thing that you really don't want to do um, when you're, you're printing your final part is make any changes to your process. So whatever worked best for your, your test prints, for your small parts, make sure that you, you use that um, for your final print. It's just an easy way to get frustrated. Is you think, oh, there's just this one uh, function that I know will, will make an improvement. You know, I'll change my retraction by um, a half a millimeter or something. And it can be disastrous sometimes for a large print. Uh, okay, so that my PVA is tool four, layer is just one, speed factor, I'm going to slow that down to 75%, I think that's, that was the last value I used. Okay, so now we're ready to go, but uh, we've got to make sure that we prep the bed exactly like we did for our test prints. Take our adhesive, I'll just pour a little bit on the bed, move it around, make sure not to leave any excess residue. And now let's upload and start. Okay, so that print finished and it looks pretty good. So I'll scrape it off the bed. And with PVA, um, you don't need to apply acetone to uh, remove the part from the bed. It releases pretty easily. And then you can peel off uh, what you can by hand. It's one of the nice things about PVA is that um, the layer adhesion is not that strong. So you can do a lot of the removal of the support material by hand. And then for the parts that are embedded further into the material, um, we'll drop the part in a bucket of water and uh, come back in a few hours and, and take a look. OK, here's the finished part. And you can see that we got good print quality, um, good adhesion between materials. Um, we have the flexibility that we want in, in the areas that we want, and then stiffness in the section um, we, where we wanted that. Uh, the bottom surface looks good. Uh, we could go with a little bit more infill on the bottom there, but I'm pretty happy with, with the way this came out. Uh, we have nice fillets on the edges instead of the, the normal sharp edges of uh, a typical 3D print that's done right on the bed. And here it is installed on the quiver. So you can see um, it fits well. And see how it works. Yeah, holds onto the arrow well, doesn't push out easily. So we're good to go. You know, one of the, uh, the main motivations for us with the H-Series machine was enabling people to actually make functional parts with a 3D printer. Um, so having multiple tool heads and, and multiple processes that you, that you can use in a single build uh, goes a long way toward that. Uh, but also just being able to print uh, urethanes, so TPUs. If you don't have experience with TPUs and you don't have any in your shop, uh, definitely get some in. They make much more durable parts and uh, parts that are very useful in outdoors applications and sporty goods applications. So yeah. We're looking forward to seeing uh, the applications that you all come up with as well. All right, so in this video, we walked through the process of getting a good multi-material print. Uh, so starting with dialing in the print settings for the particular material that we're using with each of our extruders. Um, and so printing a, a small sample part and adjusting our settings to dial that in. Then uh, we switched to doing a multi-material print um, and just dialing in our tool change settings, adjusting our retraction, our temperatures, and um, then if necessary, adjusting the mechanical action of the cleaning station and the location of the turret where it actually interacts with the cleaning station. 
and then we finished with uh, doing a full multi-material print. Um, so if you guys have questions or comments, uh, please leave those in the forums at diabasemachines.com, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.